Hi, this is Chi Kong An from YouTube channel Alpha with Cody. Today, I'm going to show you how you can make a flim strip effect for videos. Let's take a look at the end result. So there you have it. Well, obviously you'll need a flim strip. You can source for one over the internet, or you can make one of your own. I'm going to show you how easy it is to make one using Photoshop. I'll start a new file. I'll call this flim strip. And the dimensions will be 1000 by 250. Click OK. I'm going to double click on this here to create a new layer. I'm going to add a new layer. That will be the layer my flim strip will be on. So I'm going to use the uh, rectangular mark Q2 to make a selection of the first section of my flim strip. And it should be about this size here. I'm going to color this black. That's the color for my flim strip using the paint bucket tool and make sure it's black. There we go. Now I'm going to deselect by holding down Control. D. Back to my marquee tool. I'm going to make a selection at the center. That's where my video will be. I'm going to cut this out and hit the delete. And I'm going to hold down Control D again. That's the select. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a bit here. And instead of the conventional squares you see on top here, I'm going to use something different. I'm going to use, say, paw prints. So to do that, I'll need to cut them out. I'm going to use the eraser tool. I've actually made a predefined brush in the shape of a paw print, custom brush. So I've selected this size to approximately 18. That would be the size I want. So I'm going to just cut them out here like, directly throughout this whole strip. And I'm going to do the same for the bottom. You could play around with angles, you know, so that they do not look so uniform. They do not just point in one, the same direction. It's up to you. I'm just roughly doing it here. Now, once you're done with that, I'm going to duplicate this layer. Duplicate layer. Click OK. Using the Move tool, I'm going to drag this out here. And I'm going to make several copies across. Duplicate this layer again. There we go. That should be our last one. OK. That should be it. Now, I'm going to save this. File. Um, before that, I need to remove the white background you see here. I want to make this transparent. It has to be transparent. I'm going to delete this last background here. Yes. Alright, now file, save as. I'm going to save this as PNG. That's a file type that supports transparency. Click save. I'm going to replace my previous one. Okay, I'm, we can now exit out of Photoshop. I'm not going to save changes. Okay, I'm going to fire up Sony Vegas. You're going to need a couple of videos for your film strip. In this tutorial, I'm going to just use one. I'm going to divide it into a few sections for this purpose. Now, before I continue on, I'm going to make a new layer, a new video track. Because I want a white background, I'm going to insert generated media. I'm going to make a solid color, a white solid. Okay, so I can see what I'm working with. I'm going to make this video and on a new layer. Just drag it down here. Just change the order a bit. Okay, so it's nice and neat. Now, you can go ahead and delete this audio layer if you want. It's up to you. I'm, I'm going to delete it for this case so that I can have a clearer picture of what I'm working with. Now, before I move on with this slim strip effect, we need to understand something about compositing parent and compositing child. Let's take a look at these buttons at the side of each layer here. You see these arrows? Once you mouse over, it says make compositing parent and this one is for make compositing child. Now, if you click on this, make compositing child, you automatically notice that this layer is indent inside. The layer above it automatically becomes its parent. The child will be the one that's indent and below the parent. You will now have an extra option at the side here that says parent motion. It's the same as the track motion on each layer. But what parent motion does is if you were to move this around, you'll notice that whatever that is made child to it moves along. So that's what we need. We want the flame strip to move as well as the videos inside. A child would normally follow the parent around. That's why it's called a child and a parent. The parent controls the child. All right, before I make this layer a child, um, I'm going to undo here. Let me just undo that. We need to position them first. I'm going to end my clip here. I'm going to select this clip, hit the S key on my keyboard to split. I'm going to make a new track, bring this down here. Now for this first one, I'm going to position them in one of the flim strip frames first. I'm going to size this down. Let me just lock Y movement to prevent the Y movement. Let me just scale this down to about, there we go. Shift this to the left to fit into one of these. There it fits nicely. Okay. Now, as for the second one, just move this above the white background. Likewise, I'm going to change the size here. There we go. And shift it to the left a bit. 
and instead of dragging it down I can always duplicate it let me just split this first I'll duplicate this layer instead duplicate track remove this one on top remove this one bring this in now I just have to shift this aside instead of resizing them down again I get the same size here once we have had everything into position we can now make each of these layers a child to the first layer I'm going to select the first layer hold down shift and click that will make a group selection and I can just hit any one of these buttons and it will automatically make everything that's selected a child to the layer above it this one in this case so you notice here all these four layers are indent now to make it more interesting I'm going to change this to 3D. I'm going to go to parent motion and I'll just change the angles. You get the idea. I'll move the position here, play around the position, the uh, Z. Yes, that Z is the distance from our viewing angle. But there I'm going to change the Z and I'll probably give it a little tilt. The X axis about, about maybe 5. Now, for these values, you can click on this up and down and just simply drag them up and down to control them. You notice that it makes a very large movement to put them in a rough position but after that you can always hold down control while dragging to make finer movements and you can precisely position them accurately. I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna go down in my timeline about here where I end the video. Let me zoom in a bit and I'm gonna drag this in a bit. There we go so we can see what we have here. And I'm going to go back into parent motion. Click on this sync cursor so that I get to position my cursor according to where it is. And make a keyframe here. And I'm going to animate this over about there. I'm going to increase the Z value a bit just to get it about the same size as the first keyframe. And I'm going to go back to back and forth to the first frame to compare. I want to get it roughly the same. I'm going to add a reflection at the bottom and to do that I'm going to just duplicate this whole section the parent layer and all its children I'm going to shift select I'm going to right click duplicate track this will give me a whole duplicate this will be our reflection I'm going to change the parent motion again I'm going to bring this down there we go and I'm also going to flip right click on this section this area flip vertical to create that reflection and now I'm just going to try to position it so that it matches up I'll have to change the bit of the uh, Z axis because of the size it looks a bit bigger so I need to re increase this move it further away further back and I also need to shift the X a bit basically need to play around with it. You know, there are some better ways you can do this in After Effects, but we're just using Sony Vegas here. Now we go to the last keyframe, and I'll change that to flip vertical, and I'm going to change Y, bring it down about there. Reduce this to Z a bit, okay, so that it matches up. It looks just like a reflection. Now to make it look more like a reflection, I'm going to reduce the opacity. I need to do that for all the layers, including the child's as well. I'll shift select and I'll just slide any of these sliders. I'll just reduce it down to about 38%. Now for the background, instead of just a white background, I'm going to change it to something else. I can put a picture. There we go. It looks like the reflection over is over the surface of water because you can see the earth beneath it. In order to make it look more realistic, I'm going to change this into 3D so that I can move it around in 3D. I'm going to push it flat down. Now I just want this layer to show up so that I can manipulate it easier. So I'm going to hit the solo button. Now that just gives me this layer. I'm going back into track motion to increase the size a bit. Roughly about there. Maybe turn it back up a bit. There we go. So that's about it. Now I'll just release this solo. I need to increase the Z. Make this further back so they won't cut through the uh, flame strip. Increase the size to make it fit. And that should be it. That's what you get. It's pretty easy to make a flame strip using Vegas Pro. This is Chi Kok An from YouTube channel Alpha with Cody. And I hope this has helped you.